I am Kirk Trostel, a 30-year resident of Paradise, served 27 years in law enforcement and retired as the Chief of Police for the City of Chico. We're also 2018 Campfire Survivors where we lost everything as well as our entire community. Uh, PG&E has been a convicted felon for a number of years and on federal probation. What's frustrating to me is the fact that as a law enforcement officer, I saw consequences occur to felons who violated their probation but PG&E has had very little of those. Unfortunately, PG&E executives and their board members were able to slaughter 85 plus of the members of our community in Paradise, yet there's no consequence to their actions. It appears to me that PG&E, who are convicted felons, are living a felon's paradise. Hello, Your Honor, my name is Terry McBride. I live in Mountain Ranch in Calaveras County here in California. My daughter and I are both survivors of the Butte Fire from September 2015. It was started by PG&E. It's my understanding that you are considering extending their probation period for the crimes that they have committed in the, um, in the uh, previous fires. I would ask Your Honor to seriously consider extending these um, probation until they can prove themselves um, worthy of not being on probation. Once the fire as it burned and raged through our community, PG&E stood in front of all of us and said that they would make us right, that they would honor all valid claims. We still live in a camping trailer. We haven't seen a dime. And I have seen too many people suffer at their hands. And I feel as though our justice system has completely failed those of us that have survived and those that have lost loved and cherished ones and those of us that lost loved and cherished pets, frankly, and all of our memorabilia, everything that was what we had as they continue to gain profit and gain um, um, bonuses, etc. So, Your Honor, I ask whether it is normal or not that how else do you hold these types to their crime but through this probation process and i ask that you seriously consider extending that period of time again until they can prove themselves worthy because all i've seen come out of them are lies they sure lied about taking making uh, the people up here at butte fire has still over a thousand people have not seen a dime and all these folks that have suffered grave harm and grave losses because of their um, criminal behavior. Thank you, Your Honor, for hearing my story. I would say to Judge um, Alsup to consider the lives lost and the continual violation by this corporation, failure to follow the guidelines they were given over the last 12 years. Um, consider the families, the communities, the extended friends, um, all the relatives. Consider that. And I, you know, I'm, I am, it's totally disappointed that the probation is ending, of course, just because I know that they haven't followed the probation. So only by, by evidence by um, the fire in, in paradise and, you know, the electrical stuff going on in the, in the wine valley and, and you know, it's, it's disgusting. It's just disgusting, you know, and it's, it's, it makes me mad. And that's, that's why I agreed to this interview. Good morning, Judge. My name is Philip Binstock. I'm the oldest of four children of Julian Binstock, whom PG&E killed by fire on November 8th, 2018. PG&E pled guilty to having killed my dad along with 84 other people. I understand that there is a sufficient legal basis for renewing the terms and the time of PG&E's probation. I understand probation to be a 
court-imposed criminal sentence subject to stated conditions and restrictions, which releases a, con a convicted criminal defendant into the community instead of confining him or her to jail or prison. If a convict violates probation, the courts can extend, rewrite, or alter the conditions of the probation and or terminate the probation and refer the inmate to incarceration. In this case, PG&E has repeatedly violated its probation, including many additional homicides through its reckless disregard for human life. As such, I would ask that PG&E be treated like the criminal enterprise that it is. Violate probation and suffer additional consequences. These can include the, all the original terms and additional fines. Additionally, all the employees of PG&E who knew or should have known better than to violate the probationary terms should also be incarcerated. These people include, but are not limited to, all of the chief executive all of the chief executives, including chief executive officers, chief financial executives, chief operations officers, president, chairman of the board, and chief business officer. I suspect that if the upper management of PG&E was incarcerated for at least several years, that PG&E would could then comply with its probation. I ask you, Judge, that PG&E's probation be extended meaningfully so as to ensure that PG&E is sufficiently inclined to do its job safely and not kill its customers. Judge, thank you for your time. Hi, my name is uh, Steve Bradley. I'm the grandson of uh, Ethel Colleen Riggs. Uh, she was killed on uh, November 8th, 2018 by PG&E. Uh, I would ask you to consider extending PG&E's probation uh, and however you can, they clearly haven't been rehabilitated really in any shape or form. And if I know if I had violated my probation, there will be consequences for that. And I would hope that the same would apply to PG&E as well. Um, thank you. Hello, Judge William Alsop. My name is Brenda Gilchrist, and I'm a Tubbs Fire uh, victim. Uh, my house was burned down and I had a pet in the home. My cat's name was Kona. Um, she deceased in my uh, home. I was not home at the time of the fire. I was out of the country, um, but I was called to evacuate and um, many of my, or my whole area, Fountain Grove, was destroyed. Um, I learned recently that the pg and &E was on a five-year probation for the San Bruno fire. And um, I wanted to just reach out to you via video to share my concerns about pg and &E and the expiring probation. Based on uh, that pg and &E was on probation during the time of the Tubbs fire and the Paradise fire, and that we've learned that pg and &E was responsible uh, for those fires, I would like to have you consider or at least see if it's feasible to extend pg and &E's probation for another five years. For me, it's like a criminal that is on probation and they commit a crime during that probationary period. They should be held responsible, and they are. Um, in most cases, but um, with PG&E, I think it's important that because they did have major offenses related to their lack of safety measures um, during that five-year probationary period, I think that they should be held accountable. So I'm presenting this to you to take that into consideration of um, not allowing the five-year probationary period to extend or, uh, or to expire and to consider extending that five-year period of probation for another five years to PG&E. Thanks for taking this into consideration.